Hey, what's up all you huntsmen and huntresses out there? I'm Deuce Disden, and I'm back with another review of Ruby. This time it's Volume 7's Episode 9, titled As Above, So Below. Because that's the way the world works, baby. Okay, let's jump into the pandemonium that has been unleashed as Arthur Watts has shut off the heating grid to Mantle, meaning that the people in Mantle will freeze to death, basically. The heating grids were the only thing making Mantle habitable, but without that, the people are doomed. Pietro as well as Maria are doing their best to give as many people as they can some form of shelter from the tundra, the icy, cold. But the people are questioning, why would they turn off the heating grids? Did they leave us to freeze to death? Meanwhile, the council is, you know, really grilling into Ironwood, questioning the lengths that he's gone to in order to maintain his secrets. They're questioning what he's been up to, why he's been up to it, and why he's just basically run roughshod over telling the council anything. However, Arthur, mm, sorry, Jacques ends up being informed of a little situation going on with the heating grid and how his company can't seem to get it back online. Meanwhile, uh, Robin actually wants to know everything. She doesn't want to stop here. She wants answers. She wants Ironwood to finally tell her and everyone exactly what he's hiding. She knows he's scared. She knows he's doing something to try to help people. But she wants to know what. And she wants to use her semblance to do it. However, Weiss enters, revealing that she knows what's been going on and who's been behind it. Revealing footage of Jacques talking with Arthur, with one of the councilmen saying, But Arthur Watts died in a, you know, what was it, a paladin incident? Which, I'm questioning that. You know, what, what paladin incident, what was the incident, but... You know, ultimately, Ironwood demands that the video be played so they can get the full scope of what's been going on. With it fully being revealed that Arthur and Jacques conspired to get him to win the election with Jacques handing over all of his access codes to Arthur, meaning that Arthur has full reign of both Mantle as well as Atlas. So naturally, Jacques tries to make a run for it, only to be placed under arrest by Weiss. Meanwhile, the situation down in Mantle is growing worse, as people have been looting and rioting in order to just basically gain warmth at this point taking any kind of dust they can in order to increase the fires, in order to keep some form of warmth through this, you know, terrible tundra. But Arthur, as well as Tyrion, revel in the chaos that they have sown, because with this chaos, fear, and havoc and pandemonium, it can only lead to grim. Meanwhile, everyone starts to kind of j drill Jock about the situation going on, with Ironwood getting a pretty big grasp on the ex exact nature of things, that Jock gave everything over to Arthur, which shows why he was able to get the election seat, the whole situation with Penny, the whole situation with um, the heating grid and all this and that, you know, and he's just like, you did this all to win an election, but there was a slaughter, there was a massacre of innocent people, something that Robin Hill takes particularly a great amount of offense to, because whereas Arthur is just like, oh, it was just to win an election, I didn't know this would happen, people died because of that, and the council members even say that they will charge Jacques as an accessory to murder, because of what happened. However, before they can continue any further, the council members end up being informed that the heating grid down in Mantle has been switched off, meaning that many people will die from the cold. However, when Winter confronts Jock about 
turning everything back on, he lets them know that he was informed that they've been completely locked out of being able to access the heating grid. Even if they wanted to turn it back on, they wouldn't be able to. And Ruby questions I would about how bad this situation actually is. How far reaching has Arthur gotten? But he lets them know that while the Amity Arena has not been compromised, it's only a matter of time with all the access codes that he has been granted. But Robin Hill has had enough. She wants to know what he is protecting, what he's trying to hide, what he is up to. He, She wants... Ironwood to come clean about everything using the information that she got from Blake and Yang to let him know that she already knows what's going on to some degree. She just needs some gaps filled in. And as the rioting down in Mantle gains even more traction, there come the Grim. Running roughshod through the wall that has been knocked down with no supplies and no real defenses to keep it at bay. But Robin lets Ironwood know that it is only through knowing everything that they will be able to work together to protect Atlas, Mantle, and the world. However, in comes Clover and Oscar to let them know about the situation going on down in Mantle that they need to protect the people. And Ironwood is at a bit of a loss. He's like, everything is falling apart. He's not sure where to send support in this trying time. But Oscar and Ruby let him know that it's time to be up front. You know, everything's already on the table at this point. There's no point in keeping things a secret any longer. So Ironwood ultimately ends up agreeing that Ruby and the team should take the Huntsman, you know, on into Mantle to save as many lives, and he will let Robin Hill as well as the council know exactly what they're up against. So, as the huntsmen head off, we see a waiter uh, giving them a bit of the side eye. But before they leave out, Ruby and Oscar have a heart to heart where they both agree that they should ultimately tell Ironwood about the current situation. So whereas Ruby will head off with the rest of the teams, Oscar will fill Ironwood in on everything that they've been keeping from him. So, as the Huntsmen head out, they make sure that their prime directive will be to save human life, not to defeat Grimm. We have a bit of a moment between... Adora and Ren, which, you know, kind of looks like they might be reconciling, you know, with all the turmoil that they've been through. And this gives Blake and Yang a bit of a pause, you know, relationships growing and developing and all that. But the council members and Robin are kind of reeling as Ironwood has told them about what has happened and what their current situation is, the current situation with Salem. Whereas Ironwood is stunned by the fact that Ozpin kept the fact that, you know, Salem could not be killed from them. You know, knowing that, have, being informed about that, you know, they're left at a bit of a loss. But where Oscar questions what Ironwood will do now, he ultimately decides that he will continue to do his best to protect the people, because that's what's most important. And Oscar makes a comment about that being the right uh, path, that almost makes it sound like he knew more about you know, Atlas in general than he lets on, possibly showing that maybe Ozpin isn't as hidden away as it might seem. But the transport carrying the Huntsman is attacked and ends up being irreparably damaged. So they end up having no choice but to bail out across the city. Unfortunately, pretty much being divided up. Uh, meanwhile, back at the Schnee Manor, Jacques is arrested. Uh, Willow is left at a bit of a loss. And Whitley is even more devastated by what's going on here. However, the Jocksney butler ends up meeting with none other than Cinderfall, who questions Neo about if she knows where what they're looking for is, showing that she might have some idea. 
Oof. I was wondering at what point Cinder and Neo would show up because they had to have been in Atlas at least for a while, at least as long as Team Ruby has been because they were already setting off for that location before Team around the time Team Ruby set off as well. So they had to have arrived either before or a little bit after. So I'm glad to finally see that yeah, they're going to start coming into play sooner rather than later. But, man, these riots and, like, you, you can't downplay just how incredibly understandable people's frustrations are. Yes, their frustrations will gr be, bring grim, but at the same time, it's just kind of like, why wouldn't they be frustrated? Why wouldn't they be scared? Why wouldn't they be worried? With everything that's been going on, you know, they have no choice but to play into Salem's hands because of the devastation that's been going on within their city. Massive grim attacking from every possible side, some big and strong like the mammoths, the tigers who are fast and agile and vicious, and these kind of wavern-like beings, you know, dragons who, you know, are flying. You can't escape these things, and they're only just going to bring death and devastation if the huntsmen can't get this out of, under control, but there's so many of them. Who knows how well they'll be able to fend off all of these monsters. And with all the panic, it's literally just going to bring in even more grim. So what's going to happen? Where are we going to go? And how much death and devastation is going to come from the next few episodes? I can't wait to see. Tell me your thoughts on this episode in the comment section below. What was your favorite part? Or what, do you feel there should have been more action? How do you feel about the revelation that, you know, it being put out in the open that Jock's knee was behind a lot of this? Do you feel that he got his comeuppance in the end? Or do you feel that it should have been drawn out a little bit longer? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. As everything has been put on the table, pretty much everyone knows everything. And we'll just have to wait and see if that's a good or a bad thing. But until the next time, I've been Deucezin. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave it a dislike. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you never miss out on another Ruby episode review. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.